Hello everybody and welcome to another vacuum cleaner video. Well there's no unboxing in this particular video because the vacuum I'm going to showcase today has been unboxed quite a while ago and I recently came across it again when I was sorting out some of my vacuum cleaners and thought ah I haven't shown my viewers that particular vorwerk on my channel. So I'm going to show you the VK150 and compare it to the newer VK200 and spoiler alert I prefer the older model. At the time of making this video, this Vorwerk Kobold VK200 is the latest upright from that German manufacturer. I believe they have a new cordless upright coming out in the UK. It's not out in the UK yet, but I think you can get it in Europe. That'll be a premium price. As all Vorwerk products are, they're a premium priced vacuum. In fact, I expect this is the most expensive vacuum cleaner I've shown you so far on my channel. It cost me the most money anyway. So I've shown you it a bit, did an unboxing, done a bit of a demo with it, but not really gone into much detail. But we'll put that to one side for now. These are all the tools for the machine. I've got these out because I think they're going to fit this earlier model. This is the VK150. And this came out before, this is the previous version to this. And, well, it feels lighter at the moment because I've got the hard floor head on, but I think the cleaner itself is lighter than the VK200. And it's also better, I like it a lot better than the new version. In fact, had I had this before I bought this one, I think I'd have been very disappointed in this one. And I seem to remember a comment when I first showed the VK200 Somebody who has both models were very disappointed with it because they preferred the VK150 and I have to say I agree with that viewer. I bought this particular machine brand new from eBay over a year ago and it didn't come with the electric power brush which was the EB370. It came with this hard floor head with the flexible swivel joint. Although this is the later version, it did have an earlier version that initially came with this machine. In fact, the first incarnation of this particular cleaner was green and then Vorwerk decided to go for a white color on their cleaners with a green accent, which does look more modern in my eyes. So it was sold as a hard floor cleaner, didn't have the power head. I did manage to get the power head. This is the EB370. But for some reason, I couldn't find one brand new. No, I had to buy this refurbished version from an eBay seller located in Germany. And when I received it, I wasn't that happy with it. It looked quite worn. In fact, I've replaced this front part. Again, I had to import this from Germany. But I also had to replace the brush roll. And I think I got those from the official Vorwerk site based in the UK. It was very, very rattly. And I think it was because it was fitted with aftermarket brush roll parts. It wasn't the genuine Vorwerk part, I could tell. As soon as I put the new part in, it sounded a lot better. So this is the EB400 head supplied with the VK200. I think they're about the same width. Yes, about the same width. The main selling point of the EB400 is it's self-adjusting, so it will sense when it goes from carpet to hard floor and adjust itself automatically. A little brush comes up automatically when you go onto the hard floor setting and it can it adjusts itself as you're cleaning. But it doesn't work very well compared to this nozzle. On my plush carpet, it would only work with a cleaner in minimum, any higher than minimum, and it would cut out. And you can see, the brush roll, it's very hard to move. It's very narrow and you know, it's already got bits wrapped around it. Of course, you can take it out for cleaning. And it is a single brush roll as opposed to the two piece one on this machine here. And it seems to have the drive at this side, whereas the earlier version has the drive in the middle. So that's the underside of the supposedly better, newer version. Here's the underside of the older version. The advantage of having the central drive is it means it cleans closer to the edge on both sides. On this version, you can see there's quite a gap on this side, so it's not gonna get close to the edge on this side of the, the cleaner head. 
This one though, obviously it's going to leave the infamous line of shame, which many cleaners do with a central belt or drive, but it will clean up to the edge as I say. And this particular brush roll looks less fancy than this one, but this one, in my experience, cleans better, certainly on carpets. This possibly has the edge on hard floors, but this one on carpets is absolutely fantastic. And it's got a similar, well, it's got a larger clean out port. You can see this area here. We can open that up and you've got access to the air path should it become blocked. There is one on the newer version, but as you can see, it's a lot smaller. Now, let me see, how do we take out the brush? I'm trying to remember, it's a while since I've, oh, here we go, on this one, to access the brush. And you can see this has been used. It's a very, very thin brush roll. And it's not anti-hair wrap or anything. You can see there's bits, threads and fibers and gunk wrapped around it. There's a little end cap there that you can pull off. There's fibers wrapped around there as well. And on this one, to access the two brush rolls, there's a button on the top, so you press that in and then you tilt forward the cover and then you can just pull them out side by side. I won't bother with the other one. And then just slot it back in and then close the cover. Like so, this has an on and a soft setting. You select the soft setting by pressing this button with your foot. Um, I'm not sure if I got instructions with this, but the soft setting seems to just reduce the speed of the brush. And when I'm cleaning my hard floors, I tend to select the soft setting to prevent it scattering the dirt. So it's okay on hard floors, but I prefer to use the hard floor head, which I think is a bit better. So there we go. Let's see what's the wattage of this. This is 100 watts and the newer version, which is definitely heavier, is only 50 watts. So, although this is heavier, it doesn't have such a powerful motor. I think it's that way. There we go. That does need cleaning up. Let's just pop that back on. Is that in? That's in. That's fine. So, yeah. As I said, this had to go back to be repaired. I think it was from my Tiger model. I can't remember, it was, or oh, it might've been this one, but anyway, I do have the Tiger, which is the canister version. It does have this same head. So I can't recall which machine the head failed on, but I know I did have to send one of these heads back to be repaired. And as I said, it came back quite scratched. And this is the one, because I can see the scratches on it. They certainly weren't there when I sent it off. So I wasn't too happy. Let's have a look at the cleaner itself. So as I say, this particular one just came with this nozzle. And to remove it, there is a switch under here. So you can press that and pull the nozzle off. But I believe there's also a switch near the top of the cleaner. Yes, higher up on the body, there's this switch here that you can press to release the floor head. So you can either release it from the base or from the button at the top and you can see when I move the button at the top the lower button also moves. So it's far more convenient to change the heads using the button at the top because you can just put your foot on the head, squeeze the button and lift the machine off and then locate it on the other head like so and then you're ready to clean carpets. The dust bag is accessed from the front on the VK150 as opposed to accessing it from the back on the later VK200. So to open the bag door, there's a little green button here at the top. So you just press that in and the bag door opens and there's the bag. I found this a bit fiddly to take the bags out and refit a new bag. It is quite full. There is a little ring here that you can pull. I can do it right, there we go. And as you can see, the bag has sealed and they are fairly effective. It will lose a bit of dust around the seal, but it is quite a strong spring. There is a metal spring, I believe, inside the bag, but that, that could do with emptying, well, replacing. It also contains the little chips, 
little fragrance chip. I've just recently put that in, even though the bag um, is full. I can just take that out because it's got plenty of fragrance left. So I'll take that out and put it on the new bag. So let's just remove that. And there is a little bit of dirt. I have been fiddling about with this, so it might be because I've been taking the bag out a few times just to remember how it worked. But there is, I don't know if I can quite see on there, there is a little bit of dirt in the bottom so I'll just give that a wipe with a wet wipe before fitting the new bag and there is a filter located just here at the top now you just pull that down there's a little ring part and that is the pre-motor filter there's no post-motor filter on this machine like the subsequent uh, VK200 no post-motor filter this is a pre-motor filter the bag of course does most of the filtering anything very fine that can get through the bag will be stopped going into the motor by this filter if the bag should split if you're not using a genuine bag if it splits you'll get uh, most of the debris sticking to the filter and it shouldn't go through to the motor so that can be just brushed clean from time to time let's pop that back in like so okay i'll get a new bag i'll just give the bag compartment a little wipe over first Okie dokie, I'm ready to fit a new bag. So I've got the genuine bags, of course, and they come in a box like this, a box of six. Right. Doesn't want me to open the box, there we go. Oh, it's glued down, no need for that. But anyway, I've just checked the motor wattage of this, and this is a 900 watt motor. That's the suction motor, that's not including the power head. The VK200 has a 700 watt motor, not including the power head. So you've got a bit more power here. Um, whether it equates to more suction, I'm not sure, but I would think it possibly is a little bit more powerful than the new, newer version. So here's um, FP140 bag, and they are shakeable because they've got some granules of charcoal in to help reduce odors. And again, we've got this strong click opening which opens automatically when you switch the machine on you can hear the noise of it closing when you turn the cleaner off this is the fragrance chip receptacle I've still got plenty of fragrance in and this is again is genuine it's quite a nice smell these emit I don't think there's a choice of fragrances but I'm quite happy with the fragrance provided so now let's see how do we put it in it goes in this way with the Yes, with the print facing outwards, that's right. I have found this a bit tricky, but uh, I'm sure there's a knack to it. Just got to line it up properly. There we go, that's clicked into place. Just make sure the bag is seated nicely and it's not going to be trapped when we close the bag door. There we go, so that's the new bag fitted. Behind the handle, you'll find the upper cord hook. So you just need to turn that down and all the cable is released in one go and then I like to just pop the hook back in the upright position before use. There is a lower hook here and as you can see it's sticking out so before using the cleaner you just click it into place like so. At the front of the handle you'll find the on off switch and mode selector control so when you first turn the machine on it goes into automatic mode so it will automatically adjust the suction according to the surface so for example on a deep pile rug it's going to lower the suction power when you move on to a low power carpet it will up the suction and also it will change the suction when you're going onto a hard floor automatic is the setting i tend to use it in most after automatic, we've got minimum setting one. If you've got very lightweight rugs, use that setting or use that setting when you're using the hose for doing lightweight dusting. Then setting two, medium for your general cleaning. If you don't have it in automatic, medium is probably the setting you'll put it in most. But for a deeper clean, you can switch to setting three, which gives you the full suction. And amazingly, this machine does work on full power on my plush pile carpet but I haven't tried it I don't think with a brand new dust bag so we'll do that in this video but I think it should work because the power head seems more powerful than the EB400 and it just it's a lot better to use for some reason you'd think the newer model will be better but in this case 
the old model, in my opinion, is better than the new version. You can adjust the height of the handle by pressing this button here. I've got it in the fully extended position, which I find very comfortable for normal cleaning, but you can adjust it. There are various notches here. So you just press this button at the bottom and then you can lower it. It'll click into position like so. So that's the lowest position you can have it in its locked position. So if you're quite short, you can have the machine at that height. When you're using the suction pod with the hose attached, you can lower the handle right down and it will also lock in position. So yes, I tell a lie, you can use it with the handle in that position as well. So it will suit someone who is very, very short, but um, it's also useful in this position for storing it in a lower cupboard because it's very neat in this configuration. As you can see, very small and compact. This is a very light machine, lighter than the Sebo Felix, and I would say it is lighter than the VK200. You can carry it like this up the stairs, no trouble. So, only other thing I've got to show you, I think, on the cleaner before we see if the tools fit. I'll just remove the head. Again, I can do it using this button. Let's raise the handle again a bit. Press the button here, remove the head. The only other control to show you is this one here. This is an additional on off switch. So you can turn the machine on and adjust the settings from this switch here. And as you're moving this switch, the switch on the handle also moves. I've got my toolkit for the VK200 here to check the tools do fit the VK150. I think they will. I'm hoping they do anyway. So I'll take the hose out. Come on, out you come. It's no wonder people don't use these accessories. They're so tightly strapped into the case. They don't want to be removed. Okay, let's have a look. Well, yes, it does fit, but does it work? I fitted the powered hose so I can get my Polster Boy attachment. <laughs> which has fallen to bits. That shouldn't happen, it's just not been put in properly. There we go, so that's the counter-rotating brushes of the Polster Boy. Let's switch on and see if it works. So yes, no problem there. All the tools from my existing machine will fit this, which is good because I do like some of these tools when I can be bothered to get them out, especially, I've shown you this before, this rather innovative dusting brush looks quite normal until you press this lever and then it becomes a tickling stick. So excellent for lampshades, if you've got chandeliers in your home, picture frames, all your lightweight dusting above the floor and you can carry the machine, it is light. Now, I do have a carry strap, so I'm not sure if it's compatible with this machine. I believe you could buy a carry strap for the VK150, but it might be different to this. I'm not sure where the anchor points are on this. I don't think I've got an instruction book with this model, although it was sold as brand new. Hmm, I'll have to look into that. But yes, I'm not going to risk breaking it, but I will check. I should be able to buy a suitable carry strap for this. I'll have a look online. But you can lay it down on the floor if you want to. Let's move that head out of the way. It will pull along. I wouldn't recommend dragging it all around your home like that. But when you're cleaning your upholstery, the machine can be laid on the floor. The hose is long enough to do your upholstery. When you're doing your stairs, if you use the hose, obviously you will have to carry the cleaner. And I think the EB370 head should operate on the end of the hose. I think it will. It's clicked into place. Let's have a look, switch the machine on. And you can see there I was pressing the soft button. So the soft button does reduce the speed of the brush roll. So 
I would recommend that on hard floors. You don't need the full speed of the brush roll for hard floors. And it does an okay job on hard floors. I'll do a demo of it picking up a mess on a hard floor in a minute, as well as a carpet cleaning demo. But yes, I do prefer this machine. When a vacuum cleaner manufacturer brings out the latest all singing, all dancing version, especially if it's a replacement, you do expect it to be a better machine, don't you? But sometimes it's not. And I think that's the case. My opinion, that's the case with Vorwerk. So hopefully when they do a version to update the VK200, they make it a bit more like the 150, to be honest. Especially the head, I'm not keen on that head. Perhaps a head more like a SIBO brush roll, more traditional brush roll that you can easily slide out in one piece. Might be a better idea. This head is very good, I do like it. I like the L shape, very good for getting under radiators and getting around corners. I've got an airing cupboard upstairs and you open the door and it's got a bit of carpet in it. I was able to clean right up to the edge of that little bit of carpet and then it right to the door frame, you know, pulling it back. It's hard to describe. I'll have to possibly show you in the video, but I was doing that a couple of days ago and thought, that's good. It's very good. It's very flexible. I do like it. And this has been my, well, unofficial vacuum of the month for well, a couple of weeks so far. I know we're sort of, yeah, it's been probably my vacuum in the month so far for February, and now I've put a new bag in. I think I'll continue to use it, and I'm going to use some of the dusting tools as well. Okie dokie, well, we've talked about this machine long enough. I'll put down some dirt. We'll start with a hard floor, and then we'll move on and uh, see if I can clean some dirt off my plush pile living room carpet. Okay, so I've messed up my floor with some rice, red lentils and sand and I'm going to use the VK150 on its automatic setting, automatic suction setting and on the EB370 powerhead I'm going to select soft mode. As you can see almost a clean sweep apart from a little bit of debris here by the threshold strip okay in comparison let's see how the VK200 does to make it a fair contest I'm going to fit a new bag to my VK200 I think this has been used a fair bit yeah that's that's quite full a little bit of muck there okay so here's the new bag, I don't have to do anything with it. It's in this little handy package. So it's slightly easier to change the bags on this, if I remember. I think I just have to push it down. That's it. And when I close the bag door, these paper strips should be automatically cut so the bag will be able to expand. Let's check that they have been cut. Yes, they have. So when I turn the machine on, the bag will fill with air and fill the bag compartment. So on the VK200 I'm also using the auto setting but there's no adjustment required on the EB400 head because it should know that I'm cleaning a hard floor and adjust itself accordingly. I think the VK150 and VK200 are more or less evenly matched for hard floor cleaning. A very similar result. The EB400 head on the VK200 has left again a little bit of sand at the threshold strip, but not quite as much as the VK150 left. But all in all, I think they're pretty much a match for hard floor cleaning. But it's when it comes to carpet cleaning, that's what's going to be interesting. So it's off back into the living room. I'll put some dirt down on my plush pile Saxony carpet and we'll see which cleaner comes out best. I'm going to start with a pet hair pickup demonstration. So I've rubbed some of Daisy's hair into the carpet and I'm going to do a side by side comparison. 
Now, I'm going to attempt to use the cleaners at the same time, so I can't be accused of, oh, you, you used one cleaner a bit quicker than the other, it's not fair. Look, I'm not in a laboratory, <laughs> you know, this is home conditions, I'm fallible, I can make a mistake, but I'm not trying to fake anything, I've nothing to gain from faking any of my videos, I, I don't have anything to gain. Whatever vacuum cleaner you choose to buy, I just do this because of the fun of doing it. So. Do not write in, folks, and say it wasn't fair. I'm trying to be as fair as I can with these machines. So I'm going to run them both on automatic. The uh, VK150 will be on its normal carpet setting, so not on the soft setting. And I'll let the head of the uh, EB400, I'll let that head adjust itself to whatever it wants to. But both machines will be on automatic for the suction settings. Again, I have to say these cleaners are pretty evenly matched. This is the VK200, a clean sweep overall. And this is the VK150. And we can see here the infamous line of shame, as I predicted there would be, due to the fact there's no brushes in the middle. Although edge cleaning will be better with the VK150, I'm pretty sure of it. And we have less of a line of shame here because as I was pulling the cleaner back, I think I moved it slightly, which um, eliminated a bit of the line of shame. But when you're normally using these cleaners, you're overlapping the strokes. You're not going in one straight line forward and back slowly. You're going much faster and you're going all over the place. And if you saw this on your carpet when you're cleaning, you'd know just to run over it again with the machine. But yes, surprisingly, pretty evenly matched. And both machines were okay. They were adjusting themselves as I was moving them. And even the VK200, which is pretty difficult on this carpet, on the auto setting, seemed to do as well as the VK150. I've put down some general dirt on this carpet now, including the contents of a vacuum bag, which includes some fluff and hairs, some more rice and red lentils, and some bits of paper and all sorts here. So let's give these cleaners another go. Again, I'll try and use them at the same speed at the same time, and we'll compare the results. Well, again, we have quite a noticeable line of shame here from the VK150 and no line of shame with the VK200. And I have to say the VK150 did slightly worse. There's definitely more bits of dirt left on this carpet. You can see there's bits of red lentil and some black rice. So it's mainly the lentil and rice that's been left in the first two passes and of course this darker area where we had no brushing action at all due to the drive being in the middle on the EB370 head. But pretty similar, I have to say. 
So in this particular demonstration, I would say the VK200 has won. And I've also noticed a bit of snow ploughing here that's been left by the EB370 head. So all in all, yeah, I have to admit that the VK200 is better on carpets. Although in my personal experience using both these machines, I think I still prefer the VK150. Well, that's the end of my comparison between the Cobalt VK200 and its older sibling, the VK150. As you saw from the demos, there's not a lot in it regarding performance, but for me, I'm still veering towards liking the 150 better. I don't know what it is, but as I was using these cleaners, especially together, I'm still favoring this machine. It's got a more powerful motor and I do prefer this power head, although this has the convenience of being automatic, I found it not to be reliable. As I said earlier, that head had to go and be repaired. This one hasn't given me any trouble so far, even though it is a refurbished head. It's not even brand new. But I, I don't know, I prefer the handling of this machine somehow. And it just feels just a little bit more solid than the VK200. What do you think, folks? Have you got either of these machines? Or, like me, have you got both? And which do you prefer and why? I'd like to hear in the comments section why you think one is better than the other. So that's it from me and Vorvek for now, but I will be doing some more videos on this brand. I do need to show all the cleaning tools in use, especially, it's been requested, I need to show the mattress cleaner in use. And I can use the toolkit on either of these machines as I've shown in the video. So I don't know which cleaner I'll use. It'll still be the same, I suppose, the performance more or less the same when using the hose and above floor accessories. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you don't already do so. Click the bell icon and you'll be notified of all my new uploads. So until then, thanks for watching and goodbye.